Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome. We will continue with response surface methodology. In this half an hour to 40 minutes of lecture, I will explain first order model with an example. So, if you recall my last lecture on response surface methodology, there I have introduced these two figures as well as this first order model. Also, I told you that what is the path of stiffest ascent and the purpose of conducting first order uh, X model um, is to find out the, the path of improvement. Okay. Means, if you are operating here, then here you conduct experiment and then then obtain a first order response surface and and then using that first order model find out the direction of improvement so that you can con you and you conduct sequential experimentation and finally reach to the region of optimum i also discuss that when you go for first order uh, response surface model, the contour plot for the responses will be parallel lines. And if you are operating here, then you you start with the origin of this operating zone and then follow the path normal to the fitted surface. Also, I told you that in order to conduct the sequential experimentation, what you require to do, you require to know the step size means where you will go for the next experiment. So, there you will be guided through the process variables and the their uh, corresponding regression coefficient values. You start with one of the process variables and the chosen process variable is one where you have maximum knowledge about that variable or that variable has the maximum amount of contribution towards the response values. Okay. So, the, with this background, we, are, we will start this example, where there are two variable process variables. One process variable is x 1 is suppose the j 1 is reaction time. and your j 2 is your reaction temperature and the response variable is response variable is process yield variable y is process yield. Okay. Suppose you are operating with reaction time uh, may be at 35 minute and this with 155 degree Fahrenheit. What does it mean? It means that you are working with two process variable one is your reaction time that is xi 1 and your uh, one is reaction time and second one is sorry reaction temperature. So, reaction temperature j 2 and the me and you are operating may be in this zone where reaction time the center point in this zone is this this one equal to I told you that 35 and this one equal to 155. So, that when this may be we can say this is 30 degree minutes 
40 minutes, then this is maybe 150 Fahrenheit and 160 Fahrenheit. This is the current operating current operating zone. And your average yield on an average average yield here is 40 percent, which is very less. So, you want to improve it find out the where it is the maximum. So, in order to do so you have to start experimenting here. So, what kind of experimental design you adopt here? So, you all know that 2 to the power k design can be adopted here. So, 2 to the power k factorial design is very much known to you. Suppose, if we create for reaction time high and low for reaction temperature also high and low and if we assume that reaction time high is 40 minute and low is 30 minute and here low means 150 and high means 160 degree Fahrenheit. Then you got the four factorial points. In addition, because if you, you, you have two factors and their interactions and all those things we have seen earlier also that if you go for four, you have to go for replications to get the estimates of the effects. In addition, you have seen if you have the center point, then at the corners you may not, the factorial point you may not do replication. But at the center point, if you do more repli more replications, what happen using center point, which is devoid of uh, basically, which is the maybe the current, op which is the current operating zone, where if you conduct more number of experiment, you will be able to get the error terms to be estimated, even if you go for one experiment each at a single replicate at the corner points. That is what you have seen uh, in to the power k factorial design. So that means. Uh, here it is basically that factorial design with center points. So, to the bar k factorial design with center points with center point. Okay. So, what more you require to know this will be converted to coded variable x 1 and this will be converted to coded variable x 2. So, from the from that means high will be your plus 1 low will be minus 1 similarly here high will be plus 1 low will be minus 1. So, this is related to x 2 and this is related to x 1. So, we have discussed this issue how to convert the original variable to coded and coded to original variable. So, I am not going to discuss further. So, suppose under the situation the design matrix is like this x 1 x 2 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 these are the factorial points and the center point 0 0 because you know that plus 1 minus 1. So, obviously, this, this point will be 0 0 x and y respect. So, the central point is 0 0 and if you you have conducted experiment and let the responses are like this. So, what is your, your aim? You want to fit a first order model. So, you see the coded variables from the original variables and first order model is fitted here. What is first order model? Y equal to 44.4 y equal to 40.44 plus 0 0.775 x 1 plus 0 0.325 x 2 that is y cap. So, then what is this one? This is basically average of all y all y observations. Well, how do you get the x 1? x 1 you get that means the uh, sorry beta this is beta 1 this value how do you get this is beta 1 cap how do you get this is basically basically 1 by 2 into effect. So, how do you get the effect here? Effect you get average the so, 1 by 2 y suppose if I say this is x 1. So, x 1 plus bar minus y x 1 minus bar in this way and you know how to compute the effects. So, similarly this one. 
so and the regression coefficients will be half of the effect values that is what you have you know so accordingly this is done other way you can create the beta cap equal to here beta 0 cap beta 1 cap beta 2 cap straight away going for regression x transpose x inverse x transpose y and where the data are given in the previous slide ok now this is the first order model what you have fit so y cap is the expected value of y for different combination of x1 and x2 so <clears throat> what you have to do now that you have to check whether the first order model is really a fitted one at this current operating condition or not so in order to check the whether it is fitted or not what are the things you have to do first you have to find out the error estimate second you check the interactions third you check the quadratic effects so what are the things you have to check point for first order model checks one you estimate the error terms errors second one you basically test for interactions and third one is test for quadratic effect so in order to test all those things estimate of error is very important estimate of error will be done using the central central point data on central point or central point observations test for interaction means in this particular model first order model that you have considered like this that y cap equal to beta 0 cap plus beta 1 cap x 1 plus beta 2 cap x 2 but there can be beta 1 2 cap x 1 and x 2 so that is means beta 1 2 cap whether it is significant or not and when you are talking about quadratic effect when you may add something like this beta 1 1 x 1 square plus beta 2 2 x 2 square this cap so that means you want to test here that beta 1 1 cap plus beta 2 2 cap whether they are significant or not so if you find that this is equal to 0 or this equal to 0 this test is accepted then you consider the first order model if you find that this and these two are not accepted that this hypothesis beta 1 to 0 and this is not accepted so this model is not valid what you require to do you have to add this point there ok this effects to be considered and and in it may so happen that that is a local minimum local optimum situation or then you have to go uh, you have to do uh, separately further experiments in other zone and then do it ok so one after another we will now go for all the uh, first one is estimation of error so estimation of error ok estimation of error we will say sigma this is the meaning what you do you will use the central point send data use data on what data y data on central center point center point you write so what is the y data on center point where x1 x2 coded values are 0 how many data points are there 40.3 40.5 40.6 and 40 ok so using this data point data can you not find out the sigma square yes you find out the mean of this data deviation from the mean and then square divided by how many data points five data points are there you will find out other way that sigma square in general this will be squares all square all the data points minus the average square by five divided by four using this formula so that mean 40.3 square plus this square plus this square plus like this plus 40.6 square minus 
2.3 square by 5. If you add them up, it is basically 2.3 this square by 5 divided by how many observation 4 5 minus 1 4 this will give you 0 0.0430. So, this is the estimation of error this is basically mean square error. Okay. So, when you have discussed central point uh, that one we have already seen this one. Now, what do you want to do now? You want to find out the second one. Second one is your beta 1 2 that effect is there or not. So, hypothesis is H 0 beta 1 2 equal to 0 null hypothesis beta 1 2 not equal to 0. So, beta 1 2 how do you find out? You will find out from the factorial points. So, what are the factorial points values at low and high? So, when both at low, both at low mean this point it is 39.3, when your first one is high value, so x 1 at high this is 41.5, no 40.9, when x 2 high this is 40 and x 1 this and both at high 41.5. So, the interaction effects will be both similar and both the average of this plus this by 2 minus average that means, this plus this by 2 will give you the interaction effects. So, interaction effects will be accordingly you see that what happened or other way you know the you know the contrast you know the contrast. So, you, you please see this factorial points. So, minus 1 minus 1 that will be plus 1 contrast for x x 1 x 2 contrast will be that mean plus 1 then minus 1 then minus 1 then plus 1. The, once you know this contrast, so effect will be contrast divided by 1 2 into contrast by by n, n is the total number of observations. Okay. So, <coughs> so, using this contrast or the other way these two, so, so see what is happening 1 by 4 of this. So, 39, 41, 40 and this, this will give you that uh, 1 by 4 into this, because you are basically what is your contrast? Contrast is this one in between and you are estimating the regression coefficient means effect by 2 that is why instead of 1 by 2 it is 1 by 4. So, beta 1 2 is your 0 point beta 1 2 cap is 0 point minus 0 point 0 2 5. Okay. So, as I told you what, uh, what is happening, first you find out the effect 41.5 plus 39.5 divided by 2 minus 40.9 plus 40 divided by 2 that will give you the interaction effects A B. So, using this data you can find out A B equal to half of 41.5 plus 39.3 minus 40.9 minus 40 then beta 1 2 will be cap will be half of a b that means 1 by 4 of this. Now, in between this quantity this quantity is minus 0 0.10. So, beta 1 2 is 0 minus 0 0.025. So, this quantity is what is the degree of freedom for this? Degree of freedom is 1 and what is the MAC error degree of freedom you got MAC value is 0 0.043 and degree of freedom is for this equal to 4. Okay. So, so, now you know that whether this value is significant or not 
just compare this with your MSE. Okay. So, you find out Achha, now, now what happened in order to a get f you require to find out s s that a b or x 1 x 2 divided by divided by degree of freedom by m s e. So, s s how do you find out you know the contrast those so, contrast square divided by divided by 4 that will give you S S interactions you just see here. So, contrast square by 4 is the interaction S S interaction A F H S S interaction by 1 and sigma square uh, that uh, you are getting 0 0 2 5 by 0 4 3 this is 0 5 8. So, this value is your 0 0.0025 divided by 0 0.058. So, how much it is? Uh, sorry 0 0.043. So, this is 0 0.058. 0 0.058. Okay. Now, this value if you compare what is the with a 1 I think 4 0 0.05 then you will find out this value is much higher than this. So, ultimately that means this effect is insignificant fine. So, interaction effect is not there interaction effect is negligible that is what you have done here. Now, go to quadratic effect. So, if you recall that we have discussed that if there is if there is center point and if there is no quadratic effect then the average when you develop the response surface the average on the center points and average at the corner po uh, factorial point they will be same ideal case the difference will be 0. So, that is the case that mean if there is quadratic effect like beta 1 1 plus beta 2 2 in this case. So, that will be represented by your y factorial point minus y at center point. Okay. Now, y bar at factorial point is 40.425 and y bar a center point is 40.46 this value is 0 point minus 0 point 0 0.035. Okay. So, what you are doing here you are creating a hypo null hypothesis that beta 1 1 plus beta 2 2 equal to 0 alternate hypothesis is beta 1 1 plus beta 2 2 not equal to 0. So, what you require to do now you have to in order to conduct F test you require to know S S pure quadratic divided by obviously your that sigma square that is m s e. So, this is the computer now how do you get s s pure quadratic if you recall that s s pure quadratic we said that number of points at the factorial points into number of points at the center into y then y f bar minus y c bar its square divided by n a plus n c and it has 1 degree of freedom divided by your m s e. Now, how many points are there at the factor point is 4 center point is 5 now y, y f bar minus y c bar is this. So, minus 0 0.035 square divided by m s e sigma square is 0 0.0430. So, this value is coming around 0 point okay. this divided by n a plus n c is 9. So, this value is coming around 0 0.063 which is again much less than that 1 4 f 1 1 4 0 0.05. So, quadratic effect is negligible.
sure you got that you factorial point uh, design with center point has given you to estimate the error given you data to estimate the error you have estimated the error you are in a position to find out whether the beta on that interaction effect is significant or not you are also in a position to find out that whether um, that quantity effect is present or not fine so quantity effect is not there interaction is not there that means the first order model is a, a probably a fit one okay but what you require further that that means we are saying y cap equal to beta 1 cap x 1 let it be beta 0 cap plus beta 1 cap x 1 plus beta 2 cap x 2 this is a fit one but whether these values the beta cap they are significant or not parameter estim estimates test of parameter estimate you have to do test of parameter estimates so what do you require to do you require to find out the variance of beta i okay so if you do not do this then you will not be able to you have the estimated value but variance you have to find out so if you can recall that when we talk about optimality issues uh, in factorial design there i we said that under this factorial design case the variability part is basically m a c by 4 here basically it would be but 2 design so m a c by 4 so then standard er error standard error of beta i you have to find out this is m a c square root of m a c by 4 because of this coding so you got that for all the variables are minus 1 to plus 1 so the standard error of beta i will be equal for all the factor all the coded variable and this is nothing but 0 0.0430 by 4 square which is 0 0.10. Now, if you see what is the estimated estimate value uh, the regression uh, coefficient value this is 40.44 plus 0 0.775 x 1 plus 0 0.325 x 2. So, with reference to the estimated value the standard error is very low and using t test you will find out that they are significant. So, first order model is a is fit ok. So, first order model is fit now this is what is your um, ANOVA table I will not discuss further ANOVA because you all know. ANOVA model is significant and residual is this much and there are interaction insignificant pure quantity insignificant and pure error is 1720 that you have you have seen also earlier. Hmm. So, total is total is uh, this and this ANOVA table also giving the support to the first order model is fit. Once first order model is fit you got the direction. Now, how do you set the direction? The direction you see, you see this side start with coded variable. In coded variable origin is 0, 0 and you have da your in natural variable that is 35 and 140, 55. So, you choose step size delta for which one for the first x 1 or x 2. We are choosing x 1 here because x 1 is having the maximum contribution compared to many, uh, better contributor than x 2. So, now what will be the step size? Step size if you want to find out for x 1 then you have to go to the natural values that 35 is the starting point. Now, the pro from process knowledge you have to find out whether the next experiment you will conduct at 35 plus 5 or 35 plus delta x 1 basically. So, through process knowledge led it is 5. So, that means delta x 1 is 5 if delta x 1 is 5 then what will be the delta x 2 value that will be guided by the regression coefficient. What is this? Uh, let us go for the uh, this ok. So, this is this is the basically the steps. So, you start with origin then step 1 to choose step size for one of the process variable say x j which one you will choose 
has been known the most or has the largest contribution in terms of effects then step size will be delta x i then you will you will choose this one once you choose this one delta x j the next variable step size will be beta i the estimate of that value divided by that estimate of the chosen one and by its step size okay for example in this case what we have chosen we have chosen that x1 is 1 delta x1 is 1 and step size for that variable is 5 units then for the x2 it is basically beta 2 by beta 1 by delta x1 point and beta 2 is 0 0.325 and beta 1 is 0 0.775 by 1 so this is 0 0.42 so what is your step size for x1 is 1 and step size for x2 is 0 0.42 Okay. So, you see that in the, in, the, in, the, in the slide what happened we are changing delta we have fixed in coded units and in natural units. Now, origin plus delta origin is 0 0. So, this is coded unit and this is in the natural units and you conduct the experiment and your response value is this followed by followed by the second step will be 2. So, that means 1 coded variable 1, 2, 3 this way you are changing x 2 you are changing accordingly 0 0.42, 0 0.484 like this and the re resultant natural values is required because actually when you do the experiment you have to set the set the process parameters according to these values and then after the experiment you will get the y value and this is the case. So, this is the way the uh, <coughs> sequential experiment is conducted and the algorithm is also the I, what I have given you that is the algorithm for uh, conducting the stiff phase ascent from the first order model. Okay. Then if you plot this what you are finding out at the 10 step at the 10 step this is this is the maximum value. So, that mean you got you gone to the new position what is this new position new position is you started with 35 155 35 and 155 you have gone to this place as 85 and your 175 the center point center values you started experimenting here your first order regression will lead you to there now why here is the here is the curvature along this line point you now experiment so, along 175 and 85, 175 you do the other another experiment. Okay. So, so, what you, you, you have done now then you are here now you are doing another experiment again the central uh, when center point is 85, 175 and the factorial points are 80 to 90 and 170 to 180 here it was 30 to 40 then this is 150 to 160 your movement you have that improvement path reached here 80 to 90 and then 170 to 180 you here you have used factorial experiment with center point that means uh, this is the case. So, factorial experiment with center point here. Here also you do factorial experiment with central point. So, that means you are going from here to here. Okay. Factorial experiment with center point and then so 80, 170 and this is what in the, in the coded design is this. Okay. So, when you do once you do experiment you are getting the response values like this. So, what you to do here now at this new location you just see whether the first order model is fit or not. So, how you are doing this? You do exactly the same thing what we have done here first here find out the estimate the error. Okay. Then second you find out that test beta 1 2 equal to 0 or not then test beta 1 1 plus beta 2 2 equal to 0 or not 
and then test whether beta 1, beta 2 are significant or not. Exactly same manner the way you have fitted first order model. So, here you fitted first order model, here also you fit first order model. Okay. And then what you will find out that from the from the diagram we are seeing that the things are going like this then here and you reducing. So, there is in this zone there is quadratic effect. So, it is expected that first order model will not fit, but you have to test there is no because if the zone is very large one you have taken a large zone then what will happen may be first order model will actually fit there. So, whatever may be the case. So, you have to feed you have to again feed the first order model and the result is given here. Okay. So, you see that although interaction is insignificant, but pure quadratic is significant. So, that means first order model is not fit in the new operating zone. The interact findings is the interaction and pure quadratic checks imply that the first order model is not an adequate approximation the curvature and uh, in the true surface may indicate that uh, that we are near optimum but you don't know whether you are near the first order model helps you go to the new new operating zone and there when you after experiment you found out that first order model is not fit because quadratic effect is there so, what you have to do now you at this new zone you have to fit a second order model and then see that whether second order model is fit or not. Okay. So, whether if it is the quadratic effect is there if it is second order polynomial then you will get the optimum value there. Okay. So, let me conclude. So, ultimately you know that we have you uh, we have basically presented here the some portion uh, some portion of the chapter 11 by design of analysis design analysis of experiment of montgomery and uh, not sell what i we have discussed so far we says that response surface methodology is very very useful one and it is heavily used to find out the optimum zone of operation here response surface is basically methodology actually rely on regression there will be first order regression there will be second order regression we have discussed so far the first order model and there what we have shown that with, with, with reference to one example with two factors we have shown that how you will feed the first order model what are the conditions and then how do you do using the first order regression data first order model data how you go for sequential experimentation and then how do you find out the step size conduct experiment then ch and change this one after another and finally and then finally you will get some plot like this suppose this is the point of optimum now you have to again do another experiment from here to here and this experiment you fit the first order model again if first order model is likely to be unfit here but if it is first order model is fit again use that first order model go for maybe another another domain of operation operating zone or another range for operating zones. So, this is what is our first order model for response surface methodology next class we will discuss second order model for RSM. Thank you very much.